the rocky yet captivating career of college football's most polarizing player had come to an end, and after getting kicked off of Georgia, rebuilding himself at Georgia State, and finally reaching those highest of highs in LSU, he's going to be heading to the NFL Draft where the prospect of Prince McNitt remains one of the more polarizing topics in the world of football because no one knows where he should go and what he should be and what he projects to be at the NFL level. Some teams think he is as high as a top five talent. The talent itself screams top five. But do all the red flags and all the past issues tell you that he should be selected that high? Some teams just straight up don't have him on their board. Sure, he cleaned up his act good enough to be on a college football roster, but that is the bare minimum to some of these NFL teams, and they're not going to let go of his past, and they're also not going to let go of how he goes about carrying himself in the world of football, because even as much as he was great in his final season at college, I mean, every time you got in an interview or you asked him about something, it was always this more selfish tone of what he wanted to accomplish, and not even from an accolade perspective. He didn't speak about wanting to win championships or wanting to win the Heisman. That was never what he even really wanted. All he wanted was revenge and selfish desires and selfish things that NFL teams definitely pick up on and definitely question. Can he be a leader? He's not one of those guys who rallies the troops in the huddle. He keeps to himself pretty often. He doesn't really engage in a lot of stuff because he's a pretty confrontational person at times. And that's how we get to where he's kicked off of Georgia. And that's when he has that blow up at Georgia State and gets benched. That's, that's where all this stuff comes from. But when you're looking at what he is as an athlete, what he is as a talent... I mean, you could see he is fast, he is strong, he is quick, he is everything you want at six foot four, 211 pounds. He has the athletic profile of an elite NFL quarterback, but he has the mental red flags. Does he have a sack taking problem still? Does he have the leadership? And another thing that teams were wary about, he skipped the interviews at the combine because he does rub people the wrong way. So where does he go in the NFL draft? Well, as the first round ticked along, the 12th pick in the 2024 NFL Draft, the Seattle Seahawks select Prince McNitt, quarterback, LSU. And the Seattle Seahawks, under coach Mike McDonald, want their future quarterback. Rather than riding out Geno Smith, who is a good quarterback, but obviously by no means the future of this team, so he wants to get a head start on that and go for Prince McNitt and go for the upside of what could be a franchise quarterback. And if, if it fails, if it blows up in their face, well, you got Geno Smith to fall back on. But for now, this team is turning the reins over to Prince McNitt in his first NFL game after Geno Smith got banged up in the preseason. It opens the door for McNitt to be this team's starting quarterback and on his first career throw, he has a completed pass and this is a situation where it's a good spot for him to be in as there are some good players on this offense. You got Kenneth Walker to be your running back and he's never had a good run game in his college career. You got players like DK Metcalf and Jackson Smith and Jigba, Tyler Lockett. You have an offensive weaponry group, but one thing that the Seahawks have never had, it seemingly, over the past number of years is a great offensive line. So what happens when you pair a quarterback who holds onto the ball too long and has a sack-taking problem with a bottom five offensive line in the league? Well, it could be a disaster, as already against this Denver Broncos team, he's running around throwing on the run. He had a man incomplete. And you can already see in the second quarter here, McNitt is struggling here in the double digits for yards, but he hasn't completed a pass there for a first down. Now jumping ahead to third down and one in a 6-3 to three game. He is going to roll left, now roll back right, and he's got to really understand that he's just not as fast as he thinks he is. He was faster than everybody in college, and yeah, 449 speed is pretty dang good, but edge rushers nowadays can run that fast, but he has no offense here on a big play, the biggest play of his career so far. 71 yards though here in the second half and he is going to get hit as he's thrown it's going to be incomplete another field goal is good it is six to six and McNitt rolling right he is going to hesitate but he's eventually going to take off he's got the first down and he ducks out of bounds at least his rushing threat 
has translated pretty well so far. A little play action rollout. He's going to throw it, and the ball just sails on him. It's incomplete. Fourth down now, and the Seahawks staying on the field, trying to trust McNitt early on and trying to give him an opportunity to make a play, and he does. It's going to be first down and goal. Now jumping ahead, third down and goal, and McNitt throwing a jump ball for DK Metcalf, who brings it down but out of bounds, and another field goal is going to have to be settled for here. It's 9-6, to six and McNitt on the run, designed keeper, breaking a tackle and getting the first down. He's up over 80 rushing yards in his first game, and you can at least say dynamic duo on the backfield of McNitt and Kenneth Walker could be really difficult for a lot of defenses to stop. Has it translated into significant points so far, and McNitt on the run pressure got in it's gonna be a complete a field goal is good and you know 12 points usually isn't enough but today it was enough and in his first game it wasn't pretty it wasn't good it wasn't special but it was good enough to get the victory the expectations of a rookie quarterback are that of unrealistic ones for many fans everyone looks at the cj strouds of the world and expects them to light the world on fire when most of the time you don't see that with these rookie quarterbacks it takes time it takes you know a full season to get acclimated and to really adjust to the speed of the game and McNitt's already had to have this adjustment to the speed of the game where he's just not able to run around the pocket like he used to not able to extend plays like he used to has to tuck and run a little bit more instead of trying to keep his eyes downfield McNitt on a design keeper he's gonna break a tackle and he's gonna fumble the football putting it on the ground in the rain and the Patriots have it they score a touchdown off of it and while their defense didn't allow a touchdown last week they allow one already and now it's gonna need to put the ball in the end zone after an interception and another touchdown from the Patriots already an end to half Hail Mary and McNick goes down and even though Belichick isn't here anymore this is still the same Patriots defense that eats rookie quarterbacks alive third down keeper can't get to the marker and the Patriots still pitching a shutout right now but now a deep shot and that's going to be caught that was Jackson Smith and Jigba the player they're hoping can grow with McNitt the most a free rusher comes in on a nickel blitz and it's going to be incomplete so the Patriots are going to have another punt and they're going to be continuing to pitch this shutout as we near the fourth quarter now we're in it and it is still 14-0 McNitt rolling and he's trying to run away from this defender he does he's going to get to the marker and has it before getting out of bounds and trying to get that first career touchdown play action rolling out he is going to throw it on the run and it's going to be caught and it's a touchdown Noah fan in the first touchdown of McNitt's career but the Patriots put up a field goal so still a two score game here with four minutes to play flag on the field and it's going to be roughing the passer potentially and McNitt is going to draw the roughing the passer successfully. So moving the chains and moving the football. Three minutes to go, fourth down and five. Needing a big conversion here. McNitt throwing on the run, and that's going to be caught. First down, keeping the game alive for a little bit longer. McNitt to throw it, and he is going to go up top, and that's going to be caught, and near in the end zone. He is stopped at the one-yard line, and now handing it off. Zach Charbonnet, the backup running back. He gets it in, but unfortunately for our Seahawks, it's not going to be enough is they can't get the ball back with just two minutes to play. So we move on to one and one, and now against the Miami Dolphins, we're gonna need to put up some more points, especially against the Dolphins team. That puts up points in bunches, especially in the early stages of the season. As we throw outside, there is DK Metcalf. I haven't seen a whole lot of him so far, and it's about building these connections and building up the chemistry with these players. And McNitt, he goes down, he is sacked. So that's going to end that drive in a hurry. And McNitt on third down, going to throw quickly at the marker. That's going to be caught for a first down. When in doubt, you got to find these players like a Tyler Lockett, someone who is reliable and that you can get the football to in critical situations, especially as you try to grow this chemistry with other players. And Lockett there, easy play underneath. That's going to be caught. And to the two-yard line they go. First down and goal from the two. McNitt, design keeper. He's going to leap his way in in his first career rushing touchdown he had a whole bunch of them at college and that's his first one in the nfl he is a real threat on the ground when it comes to getting that nose for the end zone josh allen anthony richardson jalen hurts like in that regard 
Now a fourth down play there is going to send the football back to Miami. It is a 7-7 game, and McNitt backed up inside his own 10. He's going to throw on the run, and there's Lockett, and he's got it. And Lockett trying to be the favorite receiver of McNitt. Play action. McNitt will throw it, and he's going to try to find Lockett again. And yes, he's got it, and Tyler Lockett, he's having a big day. And now third down and four. McNitt in the shotgun, going to throw it quickly, and that's going to be caught underneath for the first down. Trying to get everyone involved, even though Tyler Lockett has been the guy so far today. But it's going to be hard when you have DK Metcalf on that other side, locked up against Jalen Ramsey. So Tyler Lockett, you know, working on guys like Cater Kohu in the slot's going to be the favorable matchup. And there goes our guy McNitt for a big time run here. It's 10-10 in the fourth quarter. McNitt's kept it close. Now throwing over the middle, and that's going to be incomplete. He just had that ball sail on him. Tried to attack Cater Kohu again. It didn't work out. And now Miami's got another touchdown. Now we jump ahead third down and long and attacking the middle of the field. That's going to be D. Eskridge for a first down and the receivers on the bench getting involved a little bit. Now throwing over the middle. That's going to be caught for another first down. Trying to drive down this field. Get a game tying drive and McNitt's first real high leverage, high pressure situation here. He's trying to run around. He's trying to find something and he's just not fast enough. And that extra couple of seconds that he would have usually had in college, he just doesn't have the speed like he used to. And throwing over the middle and it's going to be picked off and that's not how you do things in the NFL luckily he's gonna get another opportunity here and we're gonna see if with a minute to play he can do something but he's just got to learn he's just got to understand but Tyler Lockett's open he's got it for a first down and more 47 seconds to play McNitt throwing up the left side he's got it and on the run it's gonna be a touchdown Jackson Smith and Jacob for the tie we're going to overtime here and unfortunately for McNitt he's not gonna see the football He's not even going to get a chance. Miami scores a touchdown, and McNitt in the offense just has to watch him lose. The weight of being a rookie quarterback is one of the toughest things in all of sports, as the expectations from fans, media, and organization all pile onto you, and you don't even really get control of where you get to go. This isn't like college for McNitt. He didn't get to choose where he went. Now, the Seahawks are a nice landing spot for him. Luckily, he's not dealing with the Carolina Panthers or something but you don't want it to be like that when it came to Bryce Young. You don't want it to be that bad, but also you can't expect it to be as good as a Herbert, a Stroud, a, an Andrew Luck, or whoever the case you want to bring up. You just don't want it to be a disaster. Some people look for different things in their quarterback. Some just say, hey, show flashes in your rookie year. Show us that you have what it takes to be a good one. And when you're throwing plays like that, I mean... It's hard for people to believe or not have that patience, especially when you have Geno Smith waiting in the wings, ready to come in whenever you need him to. You know, Geno Smith is a player who flamed out in his first spot. Not everyone can be a Geno Smith, a Baker Mayfield, even a Sam Darnold, where they get that second opportunity. This isn't like McNitt flaming out at Georgia getting kicked off the team and then he gets to go to some bad school who's able to put up with all of his his baggage I guess to to deal with him and get the benefits of having a great quarterback and then once you outgrow that school you get to trade your way up to go to LSU you can't do that in the NFL there's no transfer portal if you flame out you get kicked off of Seattle you mess up your first location you may not get a second one and if you do, it's definitely not going to be as a starter. I mean, he can, like I said, look as far as just his own quarterback room. Geno Smith, look how long it took for him to just get another opportunity. Look how long it took for Sam Darnold to get another opportunity. Even guys like Baker Mayfield, they had to go through their struggles. The rookie quarterback cycle is a difficult one. And he's making some plays right now, throwing touchdowns to DK Metcalf and having a lead over Detroit. When it comes to McNitt as well, there's just going to be more scrutiny around him because of the type of person he is, his past, and what he's done and what he's gone through. Some people are just not going to be as forgiving, and that's how it is. You get guys like your Caleb Williams who everyone's just ready to pounce on because they, they don't like that he's a little bit different than everyone else. And some guys just get shorter leashes, but... 
for this game right here against the Lions. McNitt watches his team give up a field goal. They're going to overtime. And this time, the defense does get a stop, and we will be getting the football back. And McNitt's going to have an opportunity to try to make a play and get his team into field goal range, get his team into position for a victory. McNitt going to throw it. That's going to be caught for a first down, and he is moving his team down the field. Going to roll out, going to go back left. Doesn't want to run into Aiden Hutchinson. And a smart play there, not running right into Aiden Hutchinson uncontained. Free play here, flag on the field, throw in one. It's not going to matter because it's going to be a big time completed pass the penalty is going to be declined and it is going to set them up in field goal range where McNitt's going to come off the field watch his team kick a field goal and overtime this time around goes their way it's been a lot of these 20 to 17 23 17 20 21 scores these low 20s high teens that's the type of football the Seahawks want to play they just need McNitt to play you know, I'm not going to say mistake-free, but minimal mistakes because they believe that their defense is good enough to hang in a lot of games, and their defense is really good with all these young players. And when you have McNick coming out here against the Giants and throwing a touchdown to Njigba, you're pretty happy with that 7-0. And now in good field position, McNick underneath. That's going to be caught for a first down and into the red zone they go first down and 10 handoff kenneth walker and kenneth walker going to the first down marker goal to go now second down and goal mcnitt is gonna roll right he's got an open lane and what happens when you give mcnitt that lane you give him a touchdown it's gonna be 14-0 over the giants and now 14-3 as McNitt is having his best start to a game so far. But the pass rush is going to get in when you have Thibodeau and you have Brian Burns. You have Dexter Lawrence, who's one of the best players at all of the NFL. who's just an absolute disruptor against this offensive line. It's only a matter of time before that pressure gets in. But McNitt is trying to get the football out quick and get them out in situations where they can make plays. Just got to get the football in your playmaker's hands. And you got Kenneth Walker out there making plays and doing it in the ground game and in the receiving game. Kenneth Walker so far has been one of the NFL's leading rushers, and McNitt has been attacking the middle of the field pretty well. Now second down and 10, and the interior rush gets in, and that's going to be a sack. Now third down and 21, and McNitt's going to just do the smart thing. And that's something you want to see McNitt do more of because that play got him a field goal. So... That is not anything spectacular, not something you put on the highlight reel, but that's winning football, and that's something that you need to see McNitt do more of, and less of this, less of just running around and taking sacks. The Giants have been stacking up field goals, and just like that, it's a it's a two-point game here. The defense has been doing their thing, not allowing much in the end zone here. As now second down and 17, Dexter Lawrence chases him down, and the pressure gets in. Third and incredibly long McNitt attacking deep and it's going to be incomplete. And now good thing for our defense getting another stop here. Second down and inches throwing across his body and a nice completed pass. Now moving the chain, second down, throwing underneath. That's going to be caught and turning up field for another first down. McNitt trying to go into this four-minute offense, something that he hasn't had to do much at LSU, where possessions just don't hit four minutes plus with the frequency that they do in the NFL. Something else McNitt's had to really adjust to is he's just never had to line up under center, and I think that's an underrated thing that a quarterback has to deal with, is just going up under center, and McNitt here in the speed option. Thibodeau hits him, and the pitch flies backwards, and now goal to go just turns into trying to salvage a field goal here, throwing it for the end zone and it's over the head of a receiver luckily the field goal is good and you know the Giants are not going to be able to put the ball in the end zone for the win McNitt does get enough to get the victory but that's been the story so far it's been just enough McNitt though like I said has had to adjust to more than just four minute offense six minute offense is long possessions I mean, you can already see the 49ers are putting the whooping on him, but lining up under center has been something that he hasn't been able to really practice, something he's not been good with, and he's trying to do that, but he hasn't been able to get that because in college, he never had to do that. One thing working in his favor is they are trying to get him on the move at play-action rollouts and everything like that, but McNitt now trying to roll, trying to throw, has an open man, but he doesn't get enough loft on the football, and it's going to be intercepted by the Niners, and Diamador Lenore is going to have it. 14-0 is going to remain the score here, and a shutout at the first half, it looks like. But McNitt trying to get some points on the board has a big run. Two-minute warning is here, and McNitt to throw it. He's going to try to go outside, and that's going to be incomplete. 
fourth down and the field goal unit is going to come out here and miss the kick and not only that the Niners go and score a touchdown and McNitt hit it as he's thrown he goes and throws an interception and now suddenly a 14 to 3 game is what it should have been going into half it's 24-0 and the Niners I mean one of the most talented rosters in the NFL it's no surprise that they're doing this to McNitt but it is just brutal right now and in the third quarter trying to get something going here, trying to get some positive momentum. You don't want to get shut out. And so far, this, this offense has struggled to put up the points. I mean, it's been a struggle to even go beyond that 20-point mark. So you have to try to do a little bit more. You, you can't win every game scoring 21 points or less. But this is just something that the Seahawks signed up for. They sacrificed the short-term gain of having maybe a higher floor with Geno Smith to trying to get that long-term Super Bowl level window. Do they think that they can win a Super Bowl with Geno Smith in the next couple of years? Maybe not, but do they think if McNitt hits his potential and is everything that he could potentially be that they could win a Super Bowl with him? I think they do, and that's what the ultimate goal here is, is to try to just do what they can this season to try to make McNitt as ready as possible but it's not going to look pretty for this one. 27 to nine, and McNitt throws a couple of interceptions. And now the game against the Atlanta Falcons is here on the road, and the run game is going to be a little bit more of a focus here, as it's gonna be Kenneth Walker, who is still one of the NFL's leading rushers. He is top five in the league in carries. I know you haven't been seeing all these carries, but trust me, they are grinding out the football with Kenneth Walker, trying to give McNitt as much as they possibly can to just put him at ease but there are too many situations like that where you're put in third and nine situations because Kenneth Walker isn't exactly letting the world on fire with his average yards per carry but one person that is is McNitt because when he gets out there scrambling very high likelihood that he's going to be picking up double digit yards now throwing here on second down outside and that's going to be caught for the first down and a big play and trying to hook up with all these receivers McNitt has to like every single one of them and there goes Kenneth Walker into the end zone he's had success throwing to Njigba a lot DK's been fine Tyler Lockett's been fun and even Noah Fant's been very productive for this team and now third down and long McNitt's gonna run it and he gets some downfield blocking a good job from the receivers trying to get used to the scramble drill a little bit more not something that they really had to deal with when playing with Geno Smith but now learning to block downfield for McNitt when he gets going and speaking of getting going he's on the run stopping throwing and he's got the completed pass and he's just at the goal line it's gonna be first to goal at the one handoff Kenneth Walker he's got his second touchdown and it's a tie game and look at that the offense putting up 17 points and they are looking good right now this is the best that they've looked all season so far and it's been when you've gotten Kenneth Walker the ball a little bit more so now 17 20 play action McNitt is throwing and the play action set up nicely and that's going to be the completed pass now getting Zach Charbonnet on the field and play action rolling left and now McNitt is going to run it and getting the run game going on both sides not just the quarterback but the running back as well has been really a lifesaver but now McNitt trying to just make something happen can't do anything fourth down and three not going for the field goal surprising here McNitt throwing end zone and that's going to be caught for a touchdown and Prince McNitt delivers on fourth down Noah Fant has it and the lead is here going into the fourth quarter it's going to be a 24-20 game throwing outside on second down that's going to be caught for a first and McNitt has his team with more points that they've scored all season so far and throwing here on third down. Third and long turns to fourth down and three. And it's another one of those plays where you don't go and be ultra aggressive for the first down. You take what you can get and set up a field goal. Now a seven point lead here and throwing underneath. That's gonna be caught for the first down and close to trying to seal this game up. Four minutes to play, McNitt to throw. He's gonna go outside and that's gonna be a diving grab. And now first down and 10, McNitt throwing on the RPO. He's got it in the end zone. Tyler Lockett seals this game as the Atlanta Falcons go score a touchdown, but ultimately not enough time to do anything else. The Falcons go down and 34 points from the Seahawks. Despite some of the struggles that have been dealt with this season, four and three are the Seahawks, and they are going into a game at home against the Buffalo Bills, who are a very talented team, obviously, led by Josh Allen, and going to be a battle between two of the better running quarterbacks in the league, as McNitt has his team inside enemy territory. Third down is going to throw it outside, incomplete, 
And the punt is away. Back to the offense, though. We go, allowing those points. And McNitt is going to tuck and run it. And there goes Prince McNitt trying to just be incentivized to use his legs more. What he, Kenneth Walker, and even Zach Charbonnet can do when they get on the field can be a dangerous trio of rushers as there goes McNitt. One of his biggest runs. And McNitt hasn't been able to successfully jump over anybody like he has in college. And there goes McNitt again on the run. And he is running it well. 70 yards already on the ground. And McNitt is going to go again and into the end zone. There is McNitt on the ground for a rushing touchdown. And things are looking nice on the ground. And now throwing on the RPO. He's got it for the first down. The defense set him up in really good field position here. Three minutes to go in the half and trying to do something to get a lead going into half. McNitt is going to run it again. And the Bills are just allowing him to move out and do whatever he wants on the ground. And when you don't punish him, he's going to take advantage but maybe get a little too greedy. Like I said, he, he was good at jumping. He's a tremendous leaper. And he has just not been able to jump over anybody at the NFL level. Another thing that he's just got to get better at, putting up a jump ball for DK Metcalf, who uses his physicality to go and reel that one in. It is 10 to 7 here. And now in the second half, McNitt is running around. He is going to try to outrun people. And this time he's got some speed on his side. McNitt inside the 10 and knocked out at the 4. Goal to go. Second down and goal. McNitt to throw it. He's going to run. And he's got a lot of room. And there goes McNitt. Touchdown. And he is going to try to beat the Bills all by himself here. They are down by three, though, after a Bills touchdown. Down, fourth quarter underway third down and it's incomplete he just hasn't been able to do much of anything with his arm so far the bills have been doing a great job in coverage they have one of the better secondaries one of the better cornerback trios in the league and McNitt is just doing it all with his legs and Kenneth Walker hasn't even done a whole lot on the ground it's just been all McNitt but here we go on the outside with a completed pass and McNitt finally getting over that 100 yard mark through the air he still has more rushing yards than he does passing but can he get something going with his arm that's a nice play and Tyler Lockett's been the guy who whenever McNitt gets out on the move he's been able to find Lockett and what a valuable player it is to have who can just work back to the quarterback and then Kenneth Walker finishes the job touchdown Seahawks and the Bills go and put one in the end zone so McNitt's gonna have about two minutes to go and try and figure something out here to get a game-winning touchdown drive he gets a completed pass there first down now at about midfield throwing once more he's gonna run and he's going to try to sprint out to the edge he's got the marker he's got a lot more and he's in field goal range and McNitt having a spectacular game rushing is trying to set rookie records for rushing at this point and is going out of bounds with a big time play one yard line handing it off Kenneth Walker punches it in and things are starting to come together a little bit better here the Seahawks are five and three going into the midway point of the season and they take down Josh Allen and the Bills so now we look ahead to a game against the Rams in the rain here it's going to be a lot of rain games here in Seattle that's just how it is and you got to deal with it but they are starting off the game very nicely here McNitt is going to go outside end zone and it's a touchdown for Tyler Lockett again Lockett just being there whenever he needs him and now McNitt in a 7-7 game going to roll and he is going to just tuck it and run not quite the first down the Rams are going to be a lot more wary of his running ability and throwing underneath that's going to be caught on fourth down he gets the first down marker 7-7 game third down and eight throwing outside diving grab and he bails McNitt out and now running here third down and one trying to get the edge and it's not going to work I don't know if there's going to be a lot of games like that against the Bills where they're going to allow McNitt to run wild and just dare him to beat him with his legs. I think the Bills have kind of shown that you can't let McNitt run. And now when you try to beat him with the arm, it's just not going to work, especially in the rain where the ball is slipping out left and right. 21 to 10. It's not looking good right now in the second half as this little win streak that the Seahawks have put together is on the line here. Throwing, it's going to be caught for a first down. That's going to be Noah Fant and turning it upfield for a game into field goal range trying to make this at least a one score game here you got to get something going and McNitt stopping throwing end zone and that's going to be caught Kenneth Walker deep ball and touchdown Seahawks and the two-point conversion to try to make it a three-point game is going to be no good incomplete and the Seahawks watch them allow a touchdown so now McNitt back in a two-score game got to do something here 
and it's going to be a completed pass for a first down. McNitt's playing an all right game aside from that interception, and now rolling right. He is going to have an open lane, you know what's going to happen when you see the middle of the field that wide open. Now it's going to be third down, infield goal range. McNitt trying to keep this thing going, keep the points going, and he's going to just run out of bounds short. The field goal try will be on, but it's no good, and McNitt has to just watch as it didn't really do much of anything on that drive. I mean, you, you drove your team all the way down to about the 30-yard line, can't get any points. I, I mean, it would have still been a two-score game regardless, but you would have been a little bit more of a flexible situation here where you're not required to score a touchdown on this drive. Fortunately, they have to go and put this ball in the end zone on this drive if they're going to have a chance. McNitt's over 200 yards on the game, two touchdowns, and now throwing outside to the end zone, and that's going to be a jump ball touchdown. Jackson Smith and Jigba makes it a one-score game, but Stafford and the Rams just keep on scoring, and there's nothing we can do about it. Trying to put one up top, flag on the play. It's caught in a big-time game, and this one, will it be coming back? It was a big time grab, trying to get this to a one score game, but Charles Cross is being focused on, and it's going to be a hold, so that might have been our last opportunity to do something here. That would have been the one score game, but McNitt now trying to just scramble around, make something happen. He gets it to about the two minute warning, third down and very long. He sacked and fumbled, recovers it. Fourth down now and very long, under two minutes to play, and there's just nowhere to go with the football, and it's going to be game. And McNitt just wants to quickly move to the next one, as it wasn't even really that much on him, as in against the Niners this time, he starts it off a little bit harder. DK Metcalf for the touchdown, trying to get some revenge on the 49ers for what they did to him last time. He's already off to a better start than that 27-9 game. But the Niners pass rush, Bosa, Floyd, and... All these talented players on the defense is going to be a really difficult task. Bosa drills him and just can't do anything. Got to put the football away. Now third down once again. And Bosa gets off the block and Bosa brings him down. And you just can't block Bosa. But you can see him on the edge there hitting a the spin move. And just, he's just wrecking this game so far. We're already in the second half here. And McNitt trying to step up and throw one up top. He's trying to throw it short. He's trying to throw it deep, but this Niners defense isn't allowing anything. Aside from that one play, it's been a whole lot of struggling. And when Kenneth Walker puts the football on the ground, when you finally get some momentum, it's difficult to get anything going. 28 to 7. And McNitt slides ahead. It's fourth down and one going into the fourth quarter. And now needing a conversion to at least somewhat keep this game alive. Little speed option. And there goes Kenneth Walker on the edge. And Walker has the first in a big time game. You need to put the ball in the end zone if you're even going to have a slight minuscule of a chance here but another sack and the fumble gets recovered it's fourth down and 22 just needing to take a shot deep and McNitt's going to do just that putting one up for DK Metcalf and it's incomplete and the Niners just roll the Seahawks again and suddenly the Seahawks have dropped two straight, and now we're taking on the Arizona Cardinals. It's a tight division race between all of these teams trying to get into that mix for a playoff spot. The Seahawks are still very much in it, so even a 5-5 five five record isn't that big of an issue if you can go and take care of business. But we've not been able to win these division games 0-2 against the Niners this season. Lost to the Rams, and now our first game against the Cardinals. What's this going to look like? McNitt on third down has it, and it's going to be fourth down and two. They're going to go for it and get it. It's going to be a handoff. Kenneth Walker, touchdown, and the Seahawks take the lead, but the Cardinals go and respond. They go and get points up on the board. It feels like the defense is not doing as good recently. I mean, 38 points to the Niners, 35 points to the Rams, and a fumble here. And now McNitt's just watching his other teammates turn the football over. And this isn't even on him. 21 points already for the Cardinals here now in the second half. Free rusher gets in. No one blocked Kardec. And now it's going to be a punt situation. 3-0. and out, And threatening to go 3-0 and out once again. McNitt pressure on. And he throws one up. And it's going to be caught. Finally something goes our way. And McNitt trying to get this back to a one score game. Throwing outside. That's going to be caught. And Tyler Lockett turning up field. And Tyler Lockett to the seven yard line. Now going to goal to go. First down and goal throwing. And he tried to pull one for Metcalf, who just got out muscled, out bodied, out something. I don't think 
it's bad to give DK Metcalf a shot with inside positioning, but it didn't work. And now McNitt down 28-7, throws an interception again. And this one is his fault, all his fault. He can't make the tackle, but the Cardinals 35 to 7 and now the Seahawks suddenly are going to be on a three game losing streak and when it rains it pours for McNitt who gets shoved to the ground and it's a pick six and the Niners Cardinals and Rams all take turns steamrolling their division rivals Seahawks 42 to 7. Three straight losses over 100 points allowed in those three games and our two best offensive players have hit IR. DK Metcalf and Kenneth Walker are gone for the season. And now the Seahawks have to try to regroup. And McNitt has to try to do it against the Jets on the road with no help. I mean, this supporting cast now has gone from one of the better supporting casts in the league weapon-wise to now a below average one, especially if you're counting the offensive line. Bottom five line, no number one wide receiver, no good running back. I mean, Charbonnet's fine, but he's not a, a starter. It's just a brutal situation. Now, McNitt threw a nice touchdown to, to Noah Fant, but all he's got now is just Tyler Lockett and Jigba, Noah Fant, and a bad offensive line with no running game. So he, it's really just down to him to figure this all out. He's trying, though, and now down 14-7. to seven, Little man in motion, and it's going to be a play action. He's going to throw it back to Charbonnet, and Charbonnet puts it on the ground, and this is what I I mean no rushing game no help from the backs and this is looking a lot like college where he was routinely behind one of the worst rushing attacks in the league when it came to you know running back efficiency and guys getting four plus yards a carry at LSU none of his running backs hit four yards a carry it was just brutal and at Georgia State it wasn't much better and now it's just going to be up to him on the offensive side of the football to be this team's entire offense it feels like pass interference at least and I think the key here is just hook up with Tyler Lockett as much as he can and see what Jackson Smith and Jigba can do in situations he's going to try one for Noah Fan. it's incomplete but it's 17-10 now in the second half and throwing one to Jackson Smith and Jigba and then Jigba on the run and he's got it for a big 20 plus yard completed pass and it's going to be into enemy territory now McNitt on the read option and McNitt to the first down marker he's got it 45 yard line and moving those chains trying to keep this thing going it's been a tough battle between one of the top defenses in the league and an offense that is really because now we're starting LaVisca Chenault, that receiver, and things are not looking good. And Zach Charbonnet has something there. First down and goal. McNitt now to throw it. He's going to roll, and he is going to see if he can run it in, and he can. McNitt has it for a game-tying touchdown here and spiking the football as he watches his team only allow three. So it's a manageable situation here with eight minutes to play. Throwing underneath. That's going to be caught for a first down. Moving the chains there on third down. McNitt has made some nice plays on third down this season. You have seen him at least make some big time chain moving plays. Nothing there though. And the Jets get a field goal. So now McNitt's going to have to run a two minute drill without his two best offensive players. And on fourth down, McNitt in desperation mode has a completed pass. And that's a big one right there to keep this game alive. One minute to play. And McNitt trying to keep this Seahawks season alive. You need this one. You need something here. Throwing it. A deep middle and he's got it. And that's a big one. Hurry it back to the line. 48 seconds to play. McNitt is going to throw it. And he's looking. Has nowhere to go with the football. Just tries to get out of bounds he does but he loses seven in the process third down and long McNitt has one open man and it's caught touchdown Seahawks and that's Tyler Lockett for the victory in a one-point game and the Seahawks keep things going keep things alive and here we are back again against the Seahawks where our defense immediately got an interception on the first play so how about setting us up in great field position where McNitt can throw a laser in a tight window for Tyler Lockett for a touchdown and picking up right where we left off Lockett is going to be this team's most productive receiver for sure a handoff for Charbonnet here on third down and Charbonnet just gets blown up fourth and inches and we are not going to go for it unfortunately now punting it away and it's a 7-7 game and McNitt throws an interception he jumped that one and that's going to be Cardinal football and they score a touchdown because of it and now man in motion McNitt on second down trying to redeem himself after that pick he's got one nice to Noah Bant deep middle 
and trying to get this one back into the end zone and respond. McNitt has nowhere to go, and he's just going to try to run it, use his speed, throwing it on the run. Third down, just trying to make a desperation play. It's incomplete, but he put his team at risk and almost lost out on the field goal. Luckily, we do get it, and we don't turn the football over, but now McNitt just nowhere to go, and on third and inches, I mean, you should probably just run the ball there, but they're just not doing it, and they don't trust their run game if it's not McNitt running it. Fourth down and one, they punt it away. The Cardinals are up 21-10, to 10, and there's been too many bad situational calls here, and it's going to be intercepted. Now third down and long, McNitt. It's either been third and long with McNitt trying to make a desperation play, or it's been third or fourth and short, and we just haven't gone for it or haven't ran the football, and it just seems like there's a lack of trust in this run game. Charbonnet is by no means a great running back, but he's not an awful running back. They should be trying it more, putting a jump ball up, and that's going to be caught, and he fumbles in, and this team fumbles the football again. They go on a long drive, put it in the end zone, and that's game, and the Cardinals just destroy us again, and back down we go to 6-7, and seven, and now against a very good Packer team, and if you want to keep your season alive, you got to come out here and have one of your best performances. 7-0, Packers already up, and McNitt is going to try to do what he can to put up that good performance. He's got a big play there, and now 45-yard line play action. McNitt is going to roll and is going to throw. He's going to stop and throw it for a first down. And a nice patience there from McNitt and trying to get in communication with his receiver. Now 34-yard line. It's going to be a run for McNitt. He's going to go up ahead for the marker. He's got it in the the red zone and now moving this team down the field to end this first quarter play action McNitt is going to roll, and can he outrun him? Does he have the speed? Yes, he does, and he is getting a little faster, it feels like, throughout the season, and adjusting to see who he can and can't run away from, but he can't run away here. He's going to get brought down, fourth down. Field goal is good, but it's 14-3 to now as McNitt has play action, throwing a dart over the middle. That's in Jigba, and he's on the run, breaking a tackle, and Jackson Smith in Jigba is gone touchdown and the biggest one of the season for the seahawks as it gets them 14 to 10 now 17 to 10 as the defense allows a field goal and mcnitt gets brought down on a sack they get the football back though third down and one qb draw mcnitt breaks the tackle and goes down that's a big time broken tackle with a minute to play trying to get some points before the half as he throws one outside noah fan he's got it for the first and mcnitt got his team into field goal range but he wants the tie he wants seven and he's gonna roll will he get it he's gonna stop he's gonna throw it and he's got it that's gonna be a touchdown LaVisca Chenault getting it into the end zone and you know going from DK Metcalf to LaVisca Chenault quite the downgrade we know but he's got to try to make it work however he can and that's going to be an incomplete pass on third down Packers now 24-17 McNitt throwing over the middle that's gonna be caught for the first down and McNitt playing one of his cleaner better games so far he's rolling and he's going right on the run and that's going to be a spectacular grab first down and McNitt trying to keep his season alive trying to do everything he can you know it's going to be at this point trying to hope for a wild card maybe because you definitely go, don't got the division tiebreakers. It's 31-20, to 20, though, as the Packers just keep on scoring. So, McNitt, now seven minutes to play. You got to do something here. You got to put this football into the end zone. I mean, you can settle for a field goal, but you, with the way the Packers are moving the football, you'd prefer the touchdown here. McNitt playing a really nice game. Six minutes to play. First down, throwing. He's got his guy in Jigba underneath. That's going to be... Second down and inches, converting that to first down, and McNitt to throw it. He's going to have an open man, and that's going to be a touchdown for Noah Fan In a one-score game, the defense is going to have to come out into the field, though, and try to get a stop. McNitt on the two-point conversion. It gets broken up, and McNitt just doesn't even get to see the football again. And the defense has been awful to close this season. I mean... He went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Jordan Love and played very similar games and didn't even throw a pick. You can't even put that one on McNitt. And now you got a game against the 13-1 best team in the league, Minnesota Vikings. And at this point, you probably need to win out if you're going to have a shot at the playoffs. And with more players just dropping like flies and injuries piling up, I mean, Metcalf and Walker are not going to be back. Tyrell Dotson on the defense is hurt. Uh, or backup tight end is hurt. There's a lot of injuries on this team, and it's just been brutal. 
Seven to three is your score as the Vikings just continuing to show that our defense is having a very bad second half of the season. McNitt with a nice play though. He's gonna have it to Noah Fant for a big game and trying to get this team back on top here. And it's gonna be a throw for a marker at the first down and goal at the one and under center, handing it off. That's a touchdown, Zach Charbonnet punches it in. And we got the lead for now, but the Vikings 14-10, it's just been so difficult to have a lead and keep it for more than like a minute with the way this defense is just playing. I mean, it's crazy. This defense was not allowing 20 plus points through the first half of the season. So many games were 21-17, 20-17, 21-20, and now a fumble, and this team just has the worst ball security you will ever find, and the Vikings score again. But this is a team now that can't allow less than 20 points in the first half. McNitt throwing on the play action. That's a nice ball. But I mean, now it's at this point where the offense isn't even the issue that much. I mean, sure, it's not been perfect. And sure, there's still some turnover issues. But I mean, I feel like McNitt at this point is just pressing for success, trying to keep up with the scores that they've allowed. And when you're out here throwing touchdowns to Kenny McIntosh, I mean, what else can you even ask for him? It's 28-17 in this first half still. And McNitt over the middle got a nice one there. Little time to go, trying to just desperately get this ball down the field. And that's what I mean when you're putting up 28 points in the first half. I, I mean, McNitt's just sitting here saying, I gotta do something. I gotta, you know, keep this team in the game. Now it's 35-17. He's trying to press. He's trying to play that hero ball. He's trying too hard to keep his team in these games. And it's frustrating as a fan, probably. McNitt intercepted. And that's going to be the other way for the Vikings who break the tackle. And now McNitt has to watch his team down 42 to 17. I mean, I don't think this defense has gotten a single stop all game. Make it 49 17. It's just impossible to do anything. Intercepted one more time. And now with five minutes to play, McNitt is going to the sidelines. And it's 56 to 17. Yeah, the interceptions are by no means like helping out the cause, but I mean, there's nothing you can do when you're down 56 17. McNitt throws a little garbage time touchdown, and the Vikings are going to take home a victory and go to 14 and 1. But I mean, yeah, the three picks are completely irrelevant. You want to know why? Because J.J. McCarthy went out there and threw seven touchdowns and completed 90% of his passes. What can you do as a quarterback when you go on the other side and that's what you're up against? There's just nothing you can do. It's an unwinnable situation. And McNitt just can't catch a break because in that game, Njigba goes down for the rest of the season as well. So what else do you even have at this point? When you're going into a game against Caleb Williams and the number one overall pick trying to prove that two of the most polarizing players in all of college football can both be successful quarterbacks at the NFL level. At least we have Zach Charbonnet, right? That, that's cool. Tyler Lockett's still here, and Tyler Lockett has a touchdown, so that's going to be something. But our starting receivers are, aside from Tyler Lockett, it's going to be LaVisca Chenault and D. Eskridge. So not quite the, the separating great duo that you are you know hopeful for but fourth down now throwing and that's gonna be caught LaVisca Chanel breaking a tackle there's one thing LaVisca can do he can run after the catch it's just everything before the catch is quite bad so now running around and McNitt is trying to just do something he gets rid of the football saves it and would you look at that Zach Charbonnet is hurt he's gone and Zach Charbonnet now he's gonna be out for the rest of the season I'm not joking He's gone, and now McNitt, he's gonna have to do it himself, and he's gonna be down 17-10 here in the second quarter. His running back is now Kenny McIntosh. He's the only running back left on the roster. Quite literally, Tyler Lockett and Noah Fenn are the only starters left on this team for the offense, and you have a defense that can't seem to allow anything less than 35 points a game. So what do you even do here, McNitt? has a nice little play to get them into field goal range the kick is good halftime comes it's 17 16 so they're still in the game 
But I mean, at this point, it's just a full-on backpack job for McNitt to try to come out here and get any victories left for this team this season. But he's playing a nice game so far in this first half. Now in the second half, can he continue on the success and maybe pull off what would have to be considered an upset with the talent that we have on this team right now. McNitt to throw on first down over the middle, and that's a good one for Tyler Lockett. And Lockett, if he gets hurt, this team might just be one of the worst teams in the entire league at this point because Tyler Lockett's the only thing keeping this thing alive. Eskridge has the two-point conversion and a tie game now 24-24 and third down turns the first down with a nice completion there. McNitt now in late third quarter throwing it. That's going to be Noah Fant leaking out and he's got the first down now jumping ahead second down inside enemy territory in the red zone. McNitt is going to run it and there goes Prince McNitt. Final play of the third quarter basically is a touchdown and how is he put up 30 points with this group and why is it still a tie game McNitt just can't seem to catch a break he's running and he's trying to carry this team to victory but no one is helping him out Kenny McIntosh on the screen first down is going to be acquired here moving the football and he is making it work with the most bare bones of pieces right now. He's throwing and trying to run it. And he's got the speed. He's got the corner out running Montez Sweat, one of the fastest edge rushers in the entire league. And Montez Sweat trying to chase him down. Couldn't do it. And now McNitt has it to the two-yard line. Going to be a play action. McNitt throwing. Noah Fant. Touchdown, and it's 38-31. And McNitt, how much more does he have to do? The Bears with the football back, they get a field goal, but it's still a lead for the Seahawks. For once, they get to hold on to a lead. They get to play offensive football with the lead. McNitt has the first down, now jumping ahead in another third down situation, trying to chew this clock, and he's got the game! Sealer and McNitt! with his masterpiece performance here, taking down Caleb Williams in the snow with nobody on his team. Literally nobody. Charbonnet is gone. Dodson's still gone. Metcalf and Jigba, Kenneth Walker. This is the healthiest this team has been in a couple of weeks. The defense is finally healthy, but now the offense is still got nothing as we head into the final game of the season. And yeah, playoffs are not on the line here, but just some sort of progress some sort of flashes that you have seen from McNitt I mean I would hope after the last game and the game against the Packers that you have maybe seen enough to say that McNitt is good enough to be this team's future quarterback especially when he just pulled off a full-on carry job and put up 38 points against the Chicago Bears a good defense in the snow on the road against Caleb Williams I mean that is about as good as you could ask for and does that give you hope that he could be the quarterback of the future for this team i would hope so and has this season been perfect it has been anything but this team was once upon a time five and three on the season then proceeded to get smacked by everyone in their division everyone got hurt and tyler lockett is still here racking up all the production because no one else can get it i mean at this point they don't even run the football anymore this, this last two weeks of the season has just turned into Prince McNitt, here's the football, do something. And he's done something. He's done a lot of things for this team so far in these two games. These last six quarters, he's throwing underneath. That's going to be caught. And to the one-yard line, he got it first in goal. Now second down in goal. He's going to sneak it, and he's in for the touchdown. And somehow, some way. It's a lead for the Seahawks, who have the football. Two and a half minutes to play. McNitt to throw it. Noah Fant's way. He's got it for a big game. And McNitt, I mean, if this isn't a performance that can show you that he can elevate a team around him, that he doesn't even maybe need the top-tier talent. But there, that's a bad play. And he throws an interception. Luckily for once, it doesn't hurt them and doesn't, you know, allow a bunch of points. But you hand the football off to Kenny McIntosh one time and he fumbles the football. This is what I mean when I say they were just putting the ball in his hands and asking him to do everything. He's got a big play up the sidelines. That's D. Eskridge for the touchdown. And McNitt delivers a big one. They are holding on to this lead. And a lot of fans right now would be pretty, you know, split on what they should be doing right now. I mean, on one hand, McNitt is showing you a lot of flashes and is going out here winning games that he probably shouldn't be winning. He's up over 300 yards now, which is incredible. He's running around here just getting rid of the football. But on the other hand, 
you're looking at it saying, hey, we're not making the playoffs. You're hurting our draft pick. I mean, what, what does it matter more, though, that you, you pick a couple of spots higher in the draft or you let McNick come out here and show you everything that he can do as a player? You're down by one here at seven minutes in the fourth quarter, and McNick is still dealing and is still making plays. He's running. He's on the move. He's got the communication with Tyler Lockett for the touchdown. And the Seahawks are on top again. And now it's going to be another deficit that McNitt has to overcome. It's 28-27. Big play from Noah Fant moving down the field. I mean, when this team gets into four wide receiver packages, they're so depleted that McNitt has to sit there and watch Noah Fant run comeback routes and back shoulder plays and has to run double moves because they don't have enough receivers to field a four receiver package. McNitt gets sacked here. It's second down and very long. And this is maybe the last opportunity to try to get this win on the season throwing. That's going to be caught for Tyler Lockett and he's got a big one to get them into third and manageable. McNitt now over 400 yards, a career game for McNitt. He's going to be backing up a lot, rolling, throwing, and he's going to put one in a perfect position for Tyler Lockett. And now third down is here with a minute to play in field goal range, handing it off to Kenny McIntosh, who goes nowhere. But the field goal is good, and Prince McNitt has somehow led this team with nobody to help them on back-to-back -back game winning drives, and McNitt finishes up his rookie season strong because I'll tell you the facts Prince McNitt had 4,100 plus yards which would put him third all time for rookie quarterback passing yards and just the sixth quarterback in NFL history to throw for over 4,000 in his rookie season his 24 passing touchdowns would put him tied for fifth all time for rookie passing numbers I know 19 interceptions is really bad but it puts him nowhere near the top wouldn't even put him top 10 for rookie quarterbacks guys like Peyton Manning obviously have the record and even Matthew Stafford threw 20 picks so it's not ideal but it's not a death sentence for him as quarterback what about just barely edging out RG3's rookie record for rushing yards by a quarterback in their rookie season RG3 at 815 McNitt just over 850 and his eight rushing touchdowns puts him tied for third all-time behind Cam Newton, obviously, who has the record, but tied with Josh Allen. Now, where you might be a little bit more concerned is his sacks. He had 51 sacks taken, which would put him tied for sixth all-time among rookie quarterbacks. So, obviously, everything's a little bit more inflated because of that extra game, you know, 17-game season. But, I mean, it's nowhere near the record of David Carr's 76, and Bryce Young took 62. Kyler Murray took 48. So, again, not a death sentence, but interceptions and sacks need to get cleaned up. But, I mean, he put up the yards, he put up the touchdowns, he put up the numbers, and everything is looking really interesting for what it's going to be in his next season, especially with everyone being back healthy. So I want to frame it like this as the question. In terms of if Prince McNitt were the quarterback of your favorite team and he put up that season, that was his rookie season under those circumstances and everything that went down, how would you feel? Would you be optimistic? worried would you feel excited that he's going to be the future quarterback do you have your doubts i wonder what you would say if that were the situation so you know that's going to be mcnitt's rookie season you could kind of see everything that was really added for this team going into the next year which wasn't all that much but i hope you guys enjoyed let me know what you think of his rookie season now everything went down the ridiculous amount of injuries that he had to deal with and all the crazy things that happen if this team is playoff bound for next year but as usual, like, comment, and subscribe as all that stuff is super helpful and, you know, super important as I continue to get all these videos out for you guys. And I will see you guys all in the next one.